Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is perfect switch from RFM5 to RFM6. Today we present the first part of the webinar. I will be the presenter today. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and public relations yeah, in the company Luba Software. For instance, the technical content of the website, German and English webinars, newsletters, and so on. My two colleagues, Andreas Niemeyer and Florian Hittemann, will support me today. They will answer your questions during the webinar. Andreas Niemeyer is yeah, the main responsible person for the development of RFM6. And Florian Hittemann is also responsible for RFM6 and also for the add-on or the optimization add-on. Etc. Okay, I show you how you can ask questions. At first, I switch off my camera that you can see the full screen. You can click on that link with the question mark, then enter your question here, press send, and my two colleagues will receive your question and they will answer you. The other way is to watch the entire webinar and then email your questions to info at global.com. Okay, at first I say something about the content. I explain differences and similarities between RFM5 and RFM6. Uh, explain also advantages of the new design concept. Show you new features in RFM6 and uh, the single points are mixed up. In the webinar, I start with a new model. That's the finished model, a simple model with steel frames and a concrete surface. And I explain you step by step what is yeah, similar, what is new, and so on. It's also valid for, as the webinar is also valid for RSTAP, but yeah, in RSTAP, there are no surfaces possible, but the other workflow is also valid for this program. Okay, we start in RFM6 and with this login window, you can see the first yeah, big difference between RFM5 and RSTAP6. We have now a modern uh, online license system you don't need any hard lock or yeah, network server. The new online licensing system allows licenses of RFM6, RSTAP9, uh, RWIND, uh, etc. to be easily distributed and assigned to respective users via the Luba account. Yeah, it's very flexible and yeah, easy to use and, and to share the licenses. I log me in on the other screen that you can see my password. Just a moment. Okay, so now I'm logged in. So I go right above to the license manager and some additional hints. You can see all your add-ons that you yeah, bought. And you can borrow the license up to 30, day, uh, 30 days. And yeah, you can return the license earlier. And when you borrow the license, it's blocked for you. You can work offline yeah, without uh, any internet connection, etc. Yeah, as I said, it's very easy to use and also to handle. So I'd start with a new model right above, new model. So, and we start with the first dialog. Yeah, it's a, the, a similar dialog as an RFM5, yeah, but the user interface is very modern. modern yeah. So I start with a model name, I call it extension. 
So, yeah, and a, yeah, a new feature, a small feature, you can select a type of model, for example, 2D, XY, 3D. You can, uh, this allows you to yeah, put on the model three dimensional loads, uh, and yeah, the results can be uh, 3D internal forces. Also for the 1D, yeah, uh, that's this selection here. Okay, so then we turn to the next dialog, the add-ons. That's the yeah next uh, difference to RFM5. The the add-ons are now directly integrated in the into the main programs. This allows to the individual parts of the program to be interact with each other. Yeah, example, for example, building model. You can determine the floor masses for the dynamic analysis. Yeah. So what's also an example? You can do a 3D calculation with the building model. And then design, for example, a, a concrete slab uh, in the, in the uh, as three uh, as two D model, yeah, or, or yeah, timber slab, etc. Or another example is you can determining the ideal tightening moment of wooden beams using that on torsional warping, yeah, and for the timber design. So what's another example? You can consider the staggered form finding process uh, using the add-on construction stage analysis. So this one. Yeah, where are uh, yeah, different or various examples for this new feature? Yeah, and that's an quite important advantage uh, against uh, RFM5. So we select the concrete design and the steel design. So and turn to the next dialog. Uh, and I have to mention, you can activate or deactivate the add-ons anytime. So then the standards. Yeah, as also in RFM5, you have a lot of international standards. We use the Eurocode and in our case, the German National Annex for our example. So, yeah, we would like to use the combination wizard and also the load wizards. We selected that here above. So then settings and options. That's also a quite new feature, the member representatives and the member set representatives. And for members and member sets with the same properties, you can use representatives for model organization, design, and uh, documentation. We will use that feature in our simple example for today. Uh, and you will see that's uh, very easily to handle. And it's also a big advantage. So then the, yeah, that's the properties of the member representatives. You can change it. Now we will leave the settings, but that's also uh, important to mention the model parameters. You can import of yeah of, of the construction site for for load determination. So we select a place or a location. We enter the location Leipzig, so subsidiary. For our company, so you, you can see the snow load zone, the 
wind zone and uh, yeah the parameters and and values so and we yeah we can also see the seismic map but we don't do any seismic design today so we leave the dialog and now the program imports all the values and we can use the values later for for the load results for the snow load and for the wind load so you can see that's leipzig the altitude and so on okay now we can leave the dialog so that's now an empty window and as i mentioned with that button left above edit model base data you can return to the dialog anytime and you know, select any add-on so then the next difference or what is new in rfm6 that's the glue bar center left above i click on it yeah you can see your folders that's yeah, quite similar to the project manager in rfm5 but you can enter to your extra account so that's the, the news for example it's yeah, german for my account then you can save model templates the blocks are here you can see a lot of blocks that are also uh, yeah have got parameters not all but a lot and yeah just use them and there are also the joint templates for the add-on steel joints okay we can leave the global center maybe just uh, a hint when you do for example a right click that's my folder for today the webinar folder you can create a new project or new file and so on so now we leave the blue bar center so and yeah you can see what it's yeah similar to often five above the menu on the left side the navigator data display and views and the tables are here yeah, that's the same as an rfm5 so where are already uh, materials sections and thicknesses yeah, of the last project yeah we would like I, I would like to delete all with a right click on the basic objects you can delete all basic objects so okay and now all is empty so we start with the steel frame i change the work plane to x set yeah, above and i view in minus uh, y direction so then left above we start with a new single member the column now it should be a beam member type and there are also other member types available as usual so then section i create a new section now you have got a large database yeah as an rfm5 it's similar or yeah we have a lot of uh, a lot of more um, cross sections in our library so then yeah i use european union and arcelor mittal and an aga 160 and i have to create or i can create a new material also in this dialogue so then region also european union material type steel carbon steel yeah you can see a lot of steels and i use steel as 
235 uh, GR. Okay, so we can leave the dialogues and enter the column to be three meters high. Then I create a support left above, nodal support. Now yeah, a hinged nodal support. I change maybe the settings. No, that's quite good. We have got a gable support. Okay. Okay. So now I copy that column two times. I select all and then with the control key, when, when I press the control key, you can see a plus. And that means that I will copy that column. So five meters and again, five meters. Okay. And when you press the shift key, you uh, shift key, you can see a minus, then you will only move the object. So then you can see the green points and that's the member re representative number one. And yeah, it's, it contains all the three similar columns. And later we will design only one member representative. Yeah. And then you will can, you will see the advantages. So the horizontal beam is missing, left above, new single member. We use another section. We go in the library. That's a similar workflow as an RFM5. That's why I can go a little bit more, a, bit, a little bit faster through the dialogues. Okay. But when I'm too fast for you, you can use the recording. Uh, yeah, in the next days, you will get an email with the link to the recording and the model to the PowerPoint slides, and you will get your attendee certificate. So now you can see also here blue points. That's the member representative number two, uh, and it contains both horizontal beams. Okay, the steel construction is finished. And now we would like to yeah, model the concrete slab. We would like to yeah, enter it here in, in that area. So, and you could enter it uh, in the same height at, as the as the column height is you know, with, with an eccentricity and use line releases or line hinges, yeah, that's still possible, but I would like to use a new feature and that's also very good. That's the rigid link. So I, I copy that node right above, move, copy, selected objects. I create a copy minus 200 millimeters. Okay. Then I change the work plane above X, Y. And I set a new grid and work plane origin. So in that point, and you can see that's now my work plane. Okay, I view in set direction. And now I enter left above the concrete slab. Stiffness type, standard, and I have to create a new thickness. Yeah, the thickness should be 200. Yeah, we can easily calculate the horizontal beam is 200 high and the 
slab or the plate is 200 high, that's why I uh, copied the node 200 millimeters. So we have to create a new material. So European Union, concrete, and I use a concrete C2530. Okay. Okay. So from this point to this point. So and now the concrete slab is on the yeah, same position as it is, it is in real. We can go to the navi left uh, at the bottom navigator display. Oh, sorry. So and then to rendering uh, model, solid model, surfaces and filled including thickness. Uh, and you can see it's on the right height. But as we work with axes, we have to or we need to connect the plate with, with the horizontal beam. So and we will use a rigid link. Special objects yeah, in the navigator data. You can see also, for example, the line releases. We will use the rigid link with a right click, new rigid link. We have to select to the two lines that we would like to connect. So, and we, uh, yeah, we would like to define a line hinge. Um, we, we don't want to use a rigid connection, but a hinged connection. So, rotational should be free around the x axis and in the yeah, in the in the x direction, it should be also yeah uh, free. So we enter only a small spring that the calculation is running. So okay, that's the first rigid link, and we have to create another rigid link. I can. Do that also over the menu, insert, special objects, widget links, and dialog box. Yeah, and we turn to the same dialog. This line should be connected with the middle line or the axis line of the horizontal beam, and we use the same line hinge. Okay. So then we need to enter a line hinge left above, a uh, line support, sorry. It should be hinged. It's okay. So, and now we can calculate the model the first time. So, now it calculates, that's good. And yeah, you can see in the surface internal forces MY that you, you can see there is, I move the control panel to the screen, that that is a hinged connection. Also here it's clear and also here. Okay, so then we turn to uh, the next new feature. Imagine we you know, would like to have a, a glass uh, facet here on, on, on this side and on, on this side. And we don't want to model this facade uh, yeah, surfaces. And, but you, as a, for this 
example, you can use the low transfer surface type. And a surface with the low transfer stiffness type has no structural effect. Yeah, that's really important. And you can use it to consider the loads from the surfaces that have not been modeled. For example, yeah, as I said, facets, structures, glass surfaces, uh, trapezoidal roof sections, and so on. So let's do that. Left above, we create a new rectangular surface, stiffness type, load transfer. So on this side, on this side, uh, sorry, so and on this side. So we would like, uh, or uh, yeah, we would like to define that the load is distributed in Y direction, yeah, from the top to the bottom. That's why I select all the surfaces. Double click load transfer and I go to this uh, dialog and I define here Y stripe. Uh, you can also use this function, then it will be distributed in, in both direction. You can see that in the preview window, but we will use the Y stripe. Okay, so then we enter also line supports, uh, left both, line support, hinges. So here and here. Okay, now the simple model is defined and we turn to the loads. The self weight load case is already created automatically. I create the new surface load here above. You have got a, yeah, a lot of load types. That's yeah, not so new. That's why I go quickly through this dialog. So. Okay. That's only the roof structure. And now we enter the snow load. We can do that with create a new load case, but I will yeah, do that over the, uh, over the load wizard. Insert load wizards. Yeah, you can see the different load wizards. For example, member loads from area load wizards. The import support reactions load wizard, where you can transfer loads from different models, from different model files. And yeah, it's also a good feature. Then the snow load wizard that we will use now, the wind load wizards, and the moving load wizard. And yeah, in RFM5, there was an yeah, add on. RF move surfaces and this add-on is now included for, for free directly in RFM as load wizard. And yeah, you don't have to uh, buy such a add-on. So snow load wizard, similar workflow as in RFM5. Flat mono pitch roof or dual pitch roof, and you have to select the corner nodes. So. Okay, and now you can also define here 
members or surfaces that will be excluded from the load, uh, similar to RFM5. But what's very new and um, big advantage, you can, or the program has imported all the low or parameters and the characteristic snow load from the, from the map uh, that we did at the beginning. So then load cases, yeah, we should create uh, our one load case is important or has to be, need to be created. And we can do that with that button at the bottom, generate load cases. And I will call it snow. Now we turn to the dialogue load case and combinations. We will turn back to this dialogue later. Now we only rename the load case to snow. Okay. So that's all. Yeah, and now the snow load is created. So the same workflow for the wind. Insert load wizards, wind load wizards. And yeah, the load wizards was in, or were in RFM5 in the tools menu point and now here under, under insert load wizards. So then uh, these load or uh, um, types of walls and, and roofs are possible. I uh, use vertical walls with flat roof. Base corner nodes. These here are four nodes. Okay. And the roof corner nodes. So we would like to create a wind only in, in y direction, uh, only in, in plus x direction, uh, in this direction. For this example, I think it's enough. So, and that's wall four, uh, a, d, d, a. So. And yeah, this wall, where is the uh, yeah, building that already exists? And yeah, that's our extension. Can also exclude yeah, members or surfaces or lines from the load as an RFM5. So, and what's also here new in RFM6 that the loads uh, or the load parameters are overtaken from the website. So load cases, we need these two load cases. Uh, we create them with that button. Okay. So now yeah, that's all. And now the two load cases are created. One with roof pre pressure and one with roof section. So one load case uh, we have to create now the construction load. I use the action category imposed loads and call it construction load. Okay. Uh, and it should be one kilonewton per square meter. Okay, all loads and load cases are created. Now we have to enter the imperfections on the steel columns and the imperfections are no load cases anymore. They are uh, organized in imperfection cases. And the cases allow you to 
distribute uh, or describe an imperfection from local imperfections, equivalent loads, initial sway wire table, and so on. And what is important, you can combine all of these types, and that's quite new. Uh, but the workflow is similar as in RFM5. So above, I select new member imperfection. At first, yeah, we create the imperfection case in plus x. Okay. And now I create a member imperfection. Yeah, and we use an initial sway and the de definition type should be euro code free. Okay. Yeah, in direction of the strong, also in, in direction of the strong axis of the cross section. Then the structure height, we can measure it. These are the three meters. Okay. And we have three columns in one row. And we assign that imperfection to all three columns. Okay, and you can display that with that button here above. Show imperfection. So now we turn to the dialog load cases and combinations. In the, I, I turn to the navigator data, left at the bottom. And I search for load cases and combinations. Do a right click. Okay. So that's what we selected in the, in the base data, the standard and the, the national annex. Uh, but you can change that also here if it is ne necessary. We use the combination wizard. The result combinations are, are now only for you know, dynamic calculations. Now we use design situations uh, instead of the result combinations. And for example, you can define a design situation for the uh, yeah, design of different materials. Uh, the design situations are created. That's so yeah, the name is yeah, similar to the result combinations in, in RFM5, the ultimate limit state design. And now we have got four, uh, three for the serviceability limit state. So let's turn back to the load cases dialog that where, where, where also are also our load cases. The wind, for example, to wind load cases and the construction load. Then actions, and where it's yeah, important to mention wind, for example, you can uh, define the action type simultaneously, alternatively, and differently. And it's, cl it's clear that the wind load cases should act yeah, uh, alternatively. So design situations. So let's take a look in that combination wizard. So the, yeah, it's the P delta um, combination uh, static analysis setting. And you can see it, uh, consider imperfection cases is selected automatically. As in RFM5, we have a lot of features. For example, do, you can uh, reduce the number of generated combinations. You can use user-defined action combinations, favorable permanent actions, and so on. OK, I can leave the dialog. We select all the free serviceability uh, design situations and for them I use the combination wizard geometrical linear. 
So, and we use for the characteristic design, or we will activate the concrete design and steel design for the characteristic serviceability limit state design, but not for the frequent or only the concrete design. And we deselect the steel design also for quasi permanent. So you can see that's very flexible here. So then we can create action combinations. We can see all the load combinations, 52 different load combinations. And we, when we turn back to the design situation, you can see in the overview what uh, load combinations are assigned for the design situations. Okay. Now we leave dialog. Yeah, and we turn to the steel design. So, and we yeah, define the settings for, for the member representative for the, for the column. Yeah, we do that only one time for one column. I double click on it. So, and you can see the design types and we need to you know, create an effective length. And yeah, we will yeah, define a member length or a buckling length factor one for, for that member rep representative. We use the second order theory. We assigned imperfections and that's why the Factor one is okay. We create a new effective length. Yeah, determination, uh, the de determination type. We consider all for all designs, the flexible buckling design, the torsional buckling and the lateral torsional buckling. So, and in this dialogue, uh, we yeah, define the gable support on both ends and as i already uh, mentioned we uh, define the effective length factor one that's sufficient for the design so okay and i can display all the settings in, in the navigator display left above, I changed to the navigator display, scroll up and then types for steel design. I can select the member effective lengths and you can see the member effective as the uh, buckling factors, the supports and so on. Yeah, and you can see all is created for, yeah, for, for all columns. And when you imagine you have, uh, have, have not only three columns, but yeah, 100 uh, equal columns, you only need to define the settings one time. And that's a big advantage of RFM6. So, okay. We don't uh, yeah, define any settings for the horizontal beam. We don't want to do a stability design. We say, or we imagine the HEB 200 is supported enough by, by the concrete slab. Yeah, and that's why we don't do any, or we create any, any settings. And then only a cross-section design will be done by the program. And now you can see it's no longer necessary to create cases as in RFM5. It's much more flexible in RFM6. Let's run the calculation or the steel design. 
Now you can see what we already defined, the design situations, objects to design. Yeah, we leave the settings. I run the calculation. And it's all also a new feature in RFM6. The calculation is more, yeah, much more faster. Several servers, one per core, are initiated in parallel, each of which calculates load combinations. Yeah, and this ensure a better utilization of the cores and yeah, thus faster calculations. You can see this warning message, no effective lengths for the horizontal beam uh, are, are assigned. And yeah, that's why no stability design was performed. Yeah, and the same for the member representatives. So let's go to the design ratios on members. So, and we select design ratio by section. Yeah, those are the columns. And that's the horizontal beam. And you can see only a section proof was done for the horizontal beam. No stability design. But for the columns, there's a stability design. And when I select one line and do a double click, or I go to this button, Design check details. Return to a dialog with the design check details. And that's a quite new feature in RFM6. It's oft, or it was often wish, uh, wished by the customers. The program clearly displays the design check formulas in, in your design and including the uh, reference to the used equation from the standard. Now it's no black box anymore. You can see all the formulas for each design. And you can also send them to the printout report. Uh, that all is yeah, clear, visible in the documentation. Okay, yeah, and also different options, diagram in section, the stresses can be displayed and so on. So what's also uh, important, yeah, section information, the sub panels and so on. Okay, so we leave the dialog. I would like to show how you can optimize a cross section. We will do that only for the for the column. So we turn to the input data and the sections and in this dialog or in this table, you can optimize your cross section. Optimize with a current or in the current row, but you can also define favorites when you uh, define, for example, HEA, HEB, or HEM, and you know, the program should optimize for these three cross section rows. That's, for example, also possible. So we optimize in the current row and above. We run the steel design again. The, yeah, only the steel design was done now. And we go directly to the input data and sections. And you can see the maximum design ratio. But the program has done only um, a new uh, the calculation or new design, steel design, but they don't calculate the internal forces. But we yeah, have to do that in the second step because we need to consider the different stiffnesses of the system. That's why we run uh, the calculation again. Well, that's now an HEA 100. And 
we use the optimized section in the model. Okay. And we run the calculation again. And now, now also the internal forces will be calculated or recalculated. So that should be take only some seconds because of the fast solver. So and now go directly to the input data and the sections. Yeah, and you can see the updated maximum design ratio. Design ratios of members. I can see the stability, bending, and buckling about principal axis. That's the highest design check ratio. Okay, now we turn to the concrete design. I only do a double click on the surface number one and I go directly to the design properties. Yeah, they are already selected here. When you don't want to design the slab, then you can uncheck that. Yeah, but we would like to design the concrete slab. That's the concrete cover. XC1 is okay. Dry or permanently wet. You can see that graphic. That's uh, good support. But we will leave the XC1. Concrete design properties, you can define the yeah, first direction in X. We will leave that. Surface reinforcement, we create a new surface reinforcement. We have to define the material. We go quickly to the library. Reinforcing steel, uh, I use B. 500M. Okay. We would like to use a mesh, not rebars or stirrups. Then a Q mesh. Well, also R meshes. Q mesh 424. Okay. So that's all can leave the dialog and yeah those are the design configurations now yeah, we leave the standard settings but you can yeah change the settings in the case it's necessary also punching is possible directly in in the add-on Concrete design, you don't, uh, you don't need an additional add-on for that, as it was in RFM5. So then, deflection, we only change the reference length by minimum boundary line. Okay. So now we calculate, or we would like to run the concrete design. <coughs> so only the load combinations that we don't calculate for the steel design are calculated, then the concrete design. So design ratio and surfaces. Yeah, there are for sure some singularities. Uh, we we ignore that in, in in that case. We can also press the button that uh, you don't consider the construction rules. Yeah, this is. FEM, but if you want to smooth them, you can do that also in, in RFM 6 by using the surface results adjustments. 
Well, same workflow or similar workflow as in Marathon 5. So let's go to the results. Reinforcement on surfaces. Required reinforcement on the top and the bottom. Let's take a look in set direction. Yeah, and we would like to pr print that graphic in the printout report. But before I do that, I show you another important feature of RFM6. You can see that here, cl calculate in cloud. For larger models, you can use the cloud. You can outsource the calculation on a computing server in the cloud. Now, there are different servers available, you know, powerful uh, servers. Um, you can clearly arrange uh, the calculations in, in the extranet uh, here. Calculation task my and company. You need to uh, buy credits previously for the cl cloud, uh, cloud calculation. And you have um, virtually unlimited uh, computing capacity using these this cloud. Uh, technology. You, know, you uh, don't use your own own uh, solver. Yeah? You send it only to the, the, the cloud, and you can work on your own computer yeah, in, the, in, in the meantime. Okay. That's all for the cloud calculation. Yeah, just just try it for for larger model for models. It's a very good feature. So then we would like to print that graphic in the printout report. So print graphics to printout report. I would like to show you the printout report. We can rotate that, for example, uh, 270 degrees. And we can say window filling here. And I've got different options for, for the display. You can also, uh, yeah move the color scale outside the graphic picture. And what's also available is the multi-print. Uh, it's similar to RFM5, but also yeah, possible in RFM6. So we can press save and show. I leave all yeah, the selections. You can also print parts list of the of the steel and of the concrete and all you know, other materials so we press ok so and now the printout report will be calculated so and what is Quite new in RFM6, you can work in the printout report and in the program in parallel. Yeah. That's yeah, very easy to handle. You can move the printout report to, to the, your second window and work in the program, print more graphics in parallel and, you know, you can see that on the other screen in the printout report. A very good feature. So you can yeah, automatically print an overview of the model. Left both report. You can export to PDF, to HTML. You can 
yeah, translate the program yeah, as in RFM5. You can insert yeah, PDFs, uh, for formulas, uh, 3D graphics, plain text, and, and so on. So now you can see we have got 229 pages and they were created yeah, in a short time. The protocol is much faster, much more modern, and so on. So we leave the protocol open. I turn back to the program. I would like to print formulas in the printout report. Now the, the, the design with the highest ratio. So, and I print the formulas in the printout report. Okay. So I can go to the printout report. And we can see at the end of the steel design of the results where are this design with the formulas. Okay, then I would like to show you the, the last feature in my eyes, also a very good feature. I go back to RFM. So imagine we we have to modify the horizontal beam because of the glass facet. Uh, I go to the section. Imagine we have to cut a, 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 a bit from, from the flange here. How to do that easily with that button? I modify the section in our section. Our section will be opened. So I go to the section left above. I explode it that I can modify it. So, and I move the points here right above in minus y direction 40 millimeters. We cut 40 millimeters and press save and return. And we turn back to RFM and the section was updated in a short time. Okay. Okay. So, and now we have to run the calculation again. Yeah, we we need to run the calculation for the for the concrete design as well. That all is updated. I will do that. So it should be take only some seconds. And now in the meantime, we we can go to the printout report. I I wait some seconds until it's finished. So now it's finished. We press that button above, refresh, and we will see when we go to the sections, yeah, the, the updated section is considered in the printout report. Yeah, and also for the steel design. You can go to the steel design sections, you can see now it's the our section cross section and all was was updated in a short time yeah that's all for today i hope you could see what's what's new and what's different in rfm6 we have a lot of advantages that you can work faster as in rfm5 just try it on, on your project, maybe uh, with the trial version, you will see 
the, the new program is better, is, is faster. And yeah, I think, uh, I believe you will love it. I still have an additional hint for you. You can book our online courses. For example, the RFM6 masterclass course, it's a course for beginners. Uh, it's good for a start in RFM6. For more information, you can click on the link at the bottom for the prices and so on. You can also scan the QR codes for the single courses. Also for the Eurocode 2 course, reinforced concrete design, or the Eurocode 3 course, steel design. The courses take between two and three hours. They are divided in several parts. You can stop the course yeah, when you want and continue when you have time again. Okay, that should be all for today. I thank you for your attention. Thanks to my colleagues for answering the questions. We will present the second part of the webinar in one week. I hope we will see us again. I wish all a nice rest of the day. Bye-bye.